Like with your jacket, you look even more hunchback esque. <laughs> cranking them out. <coughs> All right, I want to talk about the comedy writing process. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, it's kind of a vague topic. I know that there's lots of ways that we can go about it. So we'll just kind of see where this one goes. And if there's some stuff left unanswered, we can always visit it again. Because we can do what we want. All right, so I guess where I want, what I want to know is where do you find inspiration for your comedy? And don't just say life. Be a little more specific. Or give examples. So you're asking me a question and then telling me what my answer is. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you how to answer it. Uh, okay. Well, the, the inspiration for comedy is not from life, but it's from everything around me. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks. The fact that uh, that that humor t humor is extracted from it, it's extracted from your experiences and the the difference between uh, me and uh, other people is that that I'm actually paying attention to the opportunities for funny things to happen. Like when when something makes me laugh, then I. I make a note of it, and, and it's it's not just a uh, an event that takes place here and now. Everybody likes to laugh, but a lot of people they'll laugh at something and then they and then they move on. Whereas I will take that thing that I thought was funny and record it. I'll put it in a notebook or I'll make an, a note uh, and and remember it, and then I will sometimes use it uh, on stage later on. So you have a, an actual notebook. I have an actual notebook that I put uh, random things that occur to me in, but also things that make me laugh. Um, something that I think is funny, I, I will take a picture of it. If it's a sign or, a, or a, uh, something, something that, if it's a sign or something that you can take a picture of, I will take a picture of it. <laughs> Uh, or I'll make a note in uh, in Evernote, and and I yeah I, I hang on to to all of those random things that I think are funny. Some of them I use and some of them I don't. But if you don't have a if you don't have a notebook, then it, it's infinitely harder to to remember uh, what what your material is or what your what your raw material is for creating comedy if you don't have a notebook. So you just, you got to write everything down. So a lot of writers have interviews where they talk about that their process is they have to just sit down and they just force themselves to write. They write, you know, like a hundred pages. And even if it's, you know, not good at all, at least they're writing and maybe they can gleam something out of it or just to keep their writing skills mm -hmm. top notch. Do you write in your comedy notebook every day like a journal? Do you just wait for it to hit you and kind of go with the creative flow? How do you handle that notebook? Uh, well, not all of the material that I create is stand-up material. And so I don't have a, I don't have a daily ritual for creating stand-up, but I do have a, I have a blog, we're doing uh, videos. Now we're doing a weekly show with SKUs. I'm doing a Bible study. So I'm, I am constantly creating uh, something. And the only way to do that is just to be disciplined enough to do it at, you know, regular intervals. I don't have a choice. The podcast, you know, there, there's not that you're writing, not that I'm writing information for the podcast, but it still requires um, some regularity that you're doing a thing even if you're not necessarily inspired to do that thing and so there's value in there's value in just creating things even if you're not inspired to create them even if you don't have a specific uh, goal or theme or topic 
to just start creating something and and it works itself out as as I'm writing it. That happens a lot with the blog. When I'm writing things on the blog, I'll start out with thinking that I'm going to be writing about one thing, and by the time I get to the end, it's something that I was not expecting to write. So it's not always fun. Sometimes it's work. Well, it depends on what you consider fun. Uh, there's a certain amount of satisfaction in doing a thing that that you didn't want to do. Um, there's certain satisfaction in, in, in creating something even if you weren't uh, inspired to create it, but you just sort of gutted through it and, and pushed it out. Um, and so it's, it's, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not always fun. Most of, the, most, of the, most of work is not fun, um, but you have to do it anyway. Well, I thought that'd be an important distinction because I think people hear comedy or entertainment and they think that they need to get inspired. They think that they're going to, you know, crank it up. They're going to sit down and they're going to be funny. They're going to write funny things. It's going to feel a certain way. It's going to feel fun or they're going to feel and feel funny. And so I just thought it was, I was just making sure that sometimes the process is grueling and not a whole lot of fun. Sometimes the process is, is just a process and whether or not it's grueling, it's like a day at the office. You know, it's not necessarily hard work, um, but it's. But sometimes it, it doesn't lead to to usable material, um, and and when you produce something that's not usable, that doesn't doesn't mean that you've wasted time. You have to you have to produce that material, um, but the, the the process of creating good comedy is creating a lot of bad comedy first and so you create that bad comedy to get it out of the way and that's what leads to the the good comedy it's a, a little bit like uh it's like walking on a path you know you can't just go from the beginning of the path to the end of the path you got to walk the whole path and that's the process of creating comedy is is walking on a path and so you've got to you've got to go through all of the unpleasant parts in order to get to to get to the end so we have a little blurb in the notebook then, or a picture that you found funny. How do you take something that small and, or maybe it's not small, but how do you take a concept and turn it into a fully formed joke? How does it go from, oh, that's a funny thought, to I can actually translate that on stage? Uh, that's a big question. Yep. I don't usually, <clears throat> I don't usually, do it uh, that way. I don't usually go, okay, well, here's a small thing. I'm going to blow it up into a bigger thing and then put it on stage. I usually will take just a small thing, whatever the thing is that was funny um, in my estimation, and I'll put that on stage and see if it works. And if it works, <clears throat> then I will, then I'll begin to add things to it. And it's a, it's an ongoing process. There's, there's some uh, jokes or premises that I will have that are just maybe a line. It's just a single line all by itself and I don't even know where it goes. Um, but then as more material gets created and I do more writing and I do more performing, um, the act changes and then that line that was funny that I didn't really have a place for it to go, suddenly there is a place where it goes. Suddenly I've got another another concept that I've developed independently of that and it's like oh well this line fits right in here you know where this wasn't this wasn't a thing before but now it is and so you have to that's why you got to keep a notebook okay, you keep a notebook and then you've got all of these generally generally funny ideas that you don't know you don't know what to do with them other than the fact that you think they're funny and then as you as you build your notebook then you start to have more and more resources that you can find things to do with. So how do you know when a joke works? Because obviously you want people to laugh, mm -hmm. but uh, you take your jokes and they usually go through a process on stage as well. So how much laughter or what's the gauge where you go, yeah, that works enough that I'm going to keep messing with it versus nope, we're going to scrap that. Have you ever gotten crickets? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've gotten... If if a joke gets crickets, then you can't keep using it. If you're 
if something that you have created is so so out there that most of the people don't understand it um, then you you really can't keep doing it and I, that was one of the comedy club owners was telling me about a comic that he had a conversation with and this guy was getting up on stage and doing the same joke and it was never getting anything and the club owner finally says why do you do that joke and the comic says well I just do that for me <laughs> and the owner said do you pay yourself too um, so there comes a there comes a point where you have to gauge you, you know what the goal is if you're if you're doing comedy as your art form as a form of self-expression and you are expressing yourself and that's the goal um, and nobody laughs well then okay the, your goal is not necessarily to to create laughter then that's fine but if your goal is to uh, is to have your comedy relate be relatable to other people then you have to sort of gauge what their reaction is when you're when you're performing and for me um, I will do I will do uh, gosh it's a hard question to answer there's, there's no there's no one answer there's no one absolute all-encompassing answer for that certain jokes I will do um, that don't get that don't have the same mass appeal to an audience but they're still funny and if the more the more obscure and insider a joke is the less likely it is to make the majority of the audience laugh but the people that does make laugh they're gonna walk away from your show remembering that joke because it is it was it was just for them it was for a small group of people and they're like man I can't believe he even knew about that I can't he was he was talking about this thing yeah it, it's it's such an it, it's an obscure uh, limited appeal to a small niche audience and if you have some of those uh, jokes um, it makes you more it makes you memorable it makes you memorable with that group of people then you also need to have some stuff that that a larger audience is going to relate to the the challenge is and the difficulty is that the more uh, universally uh, the more universal appeal you have the less likely it is that there's going to be anything that identifies you uh, as unique because if the, if the majority of the audience is relating to everything that you say well then they're going to forget you because there's going to be nothing that makes you stand out as as unique because that's the goal of most comics is I want everybody in the world to think I'm funny well that's not true you want you want people to uh, to remember something about you and the only way that you can be memorable is there's got to be something that's unique or different in your act so before I wrote down these questions I mm. figured this would be a complex topic I figured it'd be vague and kind of hard to define is there a place where there's more examples is there a place that people can go to read more about this comedy process you're leading me in to talk about my book <laughs> was I you can go to you can go to jobwriting.com. Uh, I have a class that is online. School.jobwriting.com is my comedy class, and I also have a book on Amazon that will teach you how to um, how to develop your sense of humor so that your whole life will be better. What's it called? It's called Life is Hardy Har Hard. <laughs> Isn't that a great title? How do you, how to use comedy to make your whole life better? And they can find what they can find examples. They can find a little bit about the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my last question is: Are we going to get to see some of your comedy notebook? Yes, I'm always happy to show my comedy notebook. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things in my comedy notebook. All right. Well, I think that about does it. We might be revisiting this. We might be narrowing it down. But I think that's a good start. <laughs> Thank you.